Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another prediction show. This week I won by six points to four. I lead by 123 points to 116 overall. JP's correct results were Drotada v Sligo Rovers, Waterford FC v Derry City, Pauk v Shamrock Rovers, and the second leg Istanbul against St. Patrick's Athletic. My correct scores were Waterford v Derry, Pauk v Shamrock Rovers. Istanbul versus St. Patrick's Athletic in the second leg. And I got a three-pointer, Rovers and Galway, so that's a correct score. JP, interesting how, week ahead. How, how close were both of us to getting a three-pointer in the Pats game in Istanbul? Oh, stop. Yeah, yeah, stop. Um, just to let the viewers right. know as well, there will be a European show coming up, so I'll be talking about that. But we're doing this show right. basically after the match, more or less, by the way. So right, right bang in the middle, 2 no. Right bang right. in the middle. JP went 3-0, yeah, and I went 1-0, and it could have been either, to be honest, as well, in the end. Interesting weekend ahead, JP, as usual. Every team yeah. pretty much has something to play for. We've got two games on Friday, we've got one game on Saturday, and we've got two games on Sunday, which is... um. You know, we'll get on to one of them in a minute as well. It's very interesting <laughs> kickoff time, to say the least. But um, let's start off at Oriel Park, JP, where Dundalk have had a bit of a break, actually, uh, having had their game against St. Park's they called off. Um, and it'd be interesting to see if that impacts them negatively or positively going into the, the Shelburne game. And obviously, both teams have a lot to play for. Shelburne are trying to get back top of the league outright, possibly. And Dundalk definitely have an opportunity to get off the bottom, uh, at least for Friday night. Anyway, we'll draw the plane on Sunday. Um, I'll let you go first this week, JP. How are you seeing that one overall at Oriel Park? I don't know because <laughs> I, I fancied Dundalk to, to get something against Pats, but it was mainly because of um, some Pats' exploits. So, um. I think Again, the Dunvark fans did as well, JP, hence the yeah. outcry, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I, fa I fancied them to get something in that game. Mm. Um, and if if they had played that game and, and gone ahead and, and won or got a draw, and they'd have been going into this game on a bit of a high. Mm. It seems like they could well be going in on a bit of a low because they've had a sit and watch draw to pump Slago 7-0 and then um, they haven't had a chance to respond. So, at the same time, they're coming up against a Shelburne team that are that are hard to beat. Um, don't concede a lot of goals. Um, we know Dundalk don't score a lot. I think they've only scored nineteen goals in twenty odd matches. Um, so at a, I just don't know how they they call it in terms of Dundalk if they're going to come in this with on a bit of a high because they they thought they were having the opportunity. Well, they knew they weren't going to have the opportunity to respond because they were. Was it Friday they were told? Um, yeah, so yeah. They were told Friday afternoon and then they had to watch Drogheda Hammer Slago 7-0 and this is the, the, they're only getting their opportunity now but because they're playing first this weekend it might sort of help them on, along the way. Um, Shelburne, as we know, lost top spot to Derry last week. Um, I think they're one less than four or five in the league, Shelburne. Four in the league, yeah. And uh, oh. as I said, with the cup game, they didn't win it in 90 minutes or such either. So you could nearly throw that in as a five. You know what I mean? So it's it's not a good run they're on for a team that wants to win the league. But again, they'll see this as an opportunity to get back to winning ways. Mm. Um, <laughs> I watched Dundalk a couple of weeks ago in the Brandeville and they were very solid defensively. They they came, they set up. Um, they got a, a goal from a set piece and made it difficult for Derry. But when Derry did get the equaliser that night, they, they they had a couple of chances to, to win it and didn't take them. But um I think Dundalk might sneak it, you know. I think they might sneak it one now. Yeah, um there's a couple of things with Shelburne I noticed in the game against Bohemians. I spoke about it with Sean actually and uh one of the things for me was their lack of protection for the defence, JP. And I'm just wondering if J uh, JP, if Damien Duff will, <laughs> will change that up uh, a little bit for the game. Like Harry Wood was playing left wing. Now, Harry Wood's a good technical footballer, but he's no interest in getting back and helping the fullback, for example. He just hasn't. Ali Coote's a good footballer as well. I'd say he works harder off the ball than Wood, but I, he didn't give Gannon a lot of protection either, I have to say, in that particular match. And I think it left him exposed. Um... I'm just wondering if Duff will change it up a little bit, maybe go for more hard-working wingers, like I say, a Matty Smith, who 
he's more liable to get back, isn't he, and track back and that kind of thing. Um, it's going to be interesting to see because Dundalk as well can be well organised at times under Daly, but the onus is on them a little bit being bottom of the league to like sitting back and being organised may not be enough really, particularly for the home fans. So it'll be interesting to see how they approach the game as well. I'm coming off a similar line as you, but I don't think Dundalk will win. I had nil-nil in my head. <laughs> so, surprise, surprise. I mean, people could have yeah. guessed that, I'd say. But uh, yeah, so for me, I'll go with nil-nil. And I think, though, Dundalk would be the happier with that, if I'm honest, if it was a draw, being honest with you. Because uh, it was Stretch Shelburne's um, unbeaten run, or winless run out. And... Um, Regardless of the dairy result, I think there'd be more concerns there. Um, and Dundalk, you know, a point would be a point, and it would still, you know, we don't know that Pats could be dropped at a high potential on the Sunday. So I go for nil nil draw there. Next up is obviously Galway United and Derry City at Eamon DC Park. And again, you know, Derry City are trying to keep their lead at the top of the league. Galway are trying to push for a European place. So, again, a lot riding on this game for both sides. Great to see that, by the way, this stage of the season, generally, in most games. Um, and I said last week, and you kind of echoed it as well, that Galway will annoy Shamrock Rovers, and they certainly did annoy Shamrock Rovers, to say the least. Um, Who would have thought with nine games to go with Shamrock Rovers would be 11 points with Galway? It's mad when you think about it. At the start of the season, I would have laughed at you. So if you said that at the start of the season, or so I said it, you'd think we we're crazy, to be honest with you, but they are. Um, and they put in a good performance in that match. It's This is going to be a difficult game for Derry. I know you said after the draw at home to Dundalk, the target maybe to get six points in the next two away games. So they've obviously fulfilled one part of that bargain so far with a, with a win in the RSC. It's going to be such a difficult game. Galway, no matter what, are going to make it very, very difficult. Patrick Hickey scored a good goal the other day as well. They're well organised. Derry, and that can be a problem with Derry sometimes when they come up against, it's a problem for everyone seemingly this season, but when they come up against a team like that, where the onus is to try and break them down, they can find it a little difficult to do it at times, can't they? Um, Huben still top, top scorer in the league, but probably hasn't scored too many goals re- recently. He's a Galway man, so can he score there? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go for another draw, to be honest, in this game, JP. I'm going to go one all. Yeah, um, I think it's it's 1-1-1 one, one, one in terms of um, <laughs> how they've played this season. 1-1 um, one, one for Galway, 1 for Derry, uh, and 1 draw. And the last time they played at him and Daisy Park was a 0-0 draw. Like, so, chatting of Ho- Pat Hoban, his last goal was um, the goal against Bruno's Magpies in Europe, which was three four games ago. Um we've had four games since. Um where he's played 90, 90 minutes and three of them, seventy eight and one of them. So yeah. Um disappointing from his point of view, he's still top goal scorer in the league. He've, um he's only scored two goals away from home, I believe. Um and he scored ten in the Brandewell. So he he'll want to put that right um th- this weekend. Um disappointing news a day from there he is it's likely Cameron Dummigan's going to miss the rest of the season, but um, Rory's echoed that with um, Ronan Boyce is back in full training, so be interesting to see how how that works out. I thought Andrew Wisdom came in last week was very solid at the back, gives a presence, especially going down to Waterford where we knew it was going to be tough. Um, another guy's come in from Bristol City to play left side at centre back. Uh, the left winger Robertson as well, who looked pretty sharp um, when he came on. Um, wasn't getting a lot of joy down the right side, so Rory moved him to the left side, and he seemed to get a wee bit more joy on that side. But, um, yeah, it's not going to be easy for Derry. I've said all along that I think if Shelburne were to win the league, they were going to have to stay in front. Um, and this could be a key weekend, um, because if Derry can manage to go to Galway and win, and Shelburne feel to beat Dundalk, that puts Derry in the driving seat even though Shelburne will Derry De, Shelburne then play Bowes next week in their game in hand so I think Derry will win this Keith it'll not be easy but I think now they've got their noses in front Um, they won't want to let up Um, again it'll, it'll not be easy Um, Galway will make it difficult I'm going for Derry they nick it 1-0 
one nil Derry City. Now in Sl- Sligo Rovers play Waterford FC on the Saturday, which is a very intriguing game for me, <laughs> to be honest. Um, you know, for start Waterford's form going into the game, it's not great, JP. To be fair, they've lost four of the last five games. Their win obviously coming in daily meant not three two win. Sligo weirdly have been in good form in the league, and then they had a, a weird result against Rotterdam where they lost seven nil and. You know, we've had statements come out from John Russell and everything regarding the game. And, uh, you know, fans very upset, particularly by the second half. They felt like they, they gave up very easily, to be honest. But in a way, if you're a professional, not in a way, if you are a professional footballer, you're you're itching for this game. If I'm a Sligo Rovers player, I, I'm itching for this. You should be itching for this game. Yeah, they- and it makes be- it, arguably, if I'm a Waterford fan, I'm a little bit worried, actually, going into this one. If I'm a Waterford fan. To be honest with you, um, you're first on this one, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, now, I said, I'd be saying, Waterford, I've watched them four times properly this year, all four games against Derry. Um, the first three, they never laid a glove on Derry. Last week, they put up a bit more of a fight, hit the post. Derry hit the post as well. Um, Mahers had to make a big save on half time. They've had a goal disallowed, which was rightly disallowed. Um, I thought it was, it was quite funny. Away a shocker. <laughs> I was, thought it was quite funny the goal actually considering that they felt they should have had someone similar to the, the week before. But um, um, I thought it was quite ironic that it was two. You say Slag were coming in wounded. Um, after that drubbing and in, in, in Drada. Um, so as you say, every player, every player, single player going on this game for Slag Rovers should be wanting to play. Um, putting their going out there, putting their name there, their fist to the to the game, and going out and, and getting three points. Um, and making up and showing that last week was a one off. I think they have been on a win of a run. Uh, and I know they've lost two of their last three in the league, but um, four think, out of five wins. I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was four out of five. Now I think it was yeah. that defeat. The the Pats was a yeah. that. That second and defeat the patch really was wasn't it? Um, so th- they've had two shocking results in the last two weeks: UCD in the cup and uh, and draw had a seven 0 hammering away. Um, as I say, Waterford the keeper doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence. Um, mm-hmm. especially the way he dropped that one in the net last week, and he's dropped one in the net before in a few previous games of the way they draw it. I think. Uh, um, so. I think Slag were going to win this. I think they're going to come out. They're going to be ready for it. Um, I think Keith Long is suspended for this one again. He, must, he got a three-game ban after the, the FA Cup game. Uh, and I think having your manager on the sideline is, is a big thing. Um, John Russell's back on the sideline, notably. Yeah, so... So he did he miss this? The Drogheda game then? Maybe that's why they lost that, no. Um... I think Sligo won this. I'm going to say 3 1 Sligo. Yeah, yeah. No, it's an interesting game because, apart from anything as well, the circumstances has the ball turned and fourth in the league and 40 points, which is very interesting as well. And it is funny a Sligo Rovers win, despite all the angst and the terrible performance last week, last week would put them up the third, which is crazy. Like, it's it's mad. It's, <laughs> it's hilarious, actually, in many ways. But, um, as I said, John Russell's back for this one as well. So I think I don't think John Russell has to do much actually to motivate the players. He certainly shouldn't have to do anything to motivate the players. It should be self motivated going into this game. And you know, I'm sure he talked and they had a brief about the draw of the game. And now they should know what to do themselves in their heads. And I can see a blood and thunder performance from Sligo Rovers and Waterford. We'll expect that, I think, to be honest with you. I certainly don't think Waterford will be thinking going into this game, oh, drawing to beat them 7 0 last week, we're going to walk all over them. No, I think they'll be expecting a backlash because all in all, it's like Rovers are a good side. They're in the same position as Waterford in the league. Waterford have stuttered, really, you'd have to say, in the last while. And I, I think you're right. The goalkeeper has been an issue with Sam Sargent being missing. That's been massive. I'd be tempted to bring in Matt Connor in goal for this one now, to be honest, because he's a, like he's. Not one of the best goalkeepers in the league, but you feel he's a safer, he's a steady Eddie. That's all they need in goal for now, like, you know what I mean? And it'd be interesting to see if, if uh, they make that call, actually. Really interested to make that call. And you mentioned how 
Huben hasn't been in the goals. Um, aside from the game against that loan, the cup, Amund hasn't really been scoring either. But again, that's down to a lack of creativity, in my personal opinion, for Waterford. And, you know, they'd be looking to try and create chances in the game. I think it'd be a good game. I think there'd be goals. I'm with you, though. Sligo Rovers, 2-1, though, for me. I'm going to go for. On Sunday, set your alarm <laughs> clock for this one. Um, <laughs> Bohemians take on Shamrock Rovers. At 11.30, I'll be at this one, by the way. This is going to be really weird going to this game, by the way. 11.30 in the morning. Um, I think it's weird for players as well, JP, to be honest. You yeah. know what I mean? You're trying to prepare different ways in terms of food and other bits and pieces and just getting up unnaturally, training, you know what I mean, warm-ups and naturally early yeah. in the morning. You, it's a strange one. You, your pre-match meal probably becomes different. Um, you know, I, th- I remember... A tweet from Wayne Rooney years ago saying trying to shovel down pasta in the morning for the kickoff is is a bit sickening. So Oof. um I wouldn't want to do it. Like it's it's mm. just changes every the preparation just changes everything. Like it's um It does. And uh, some people like I, myself personally, I actually struggle to eat early in the morning, by the way. I can't really eat. Some people are like that as well. So but the players will have to eat, they'll have no choice. It's uh yeah, it's going to be an odd one. I don't know what way the atmosphere will be, um, but it's a massive game. I'm first on this one, aren't I? Yeah, it's a massive yeah. game, really, for both clubs. Again, there's a lot on the line. I mean, if both were to go in and lose this, you know, you're looking at them and you're kind of going, they're getting a little closer to that, post, certainly to ninth place in the table. And then Rovers are in a situation where, you know, for me, they're out of the title race now. I think that goal again for me sealed. There's too much to do, and you know, but... They have a European uh, battle on their hands as well, and they can't just concentrate on Conference League either because it's vital that Shamrock Rovers, I would suggest, get into Europe next year because of what they've achieved in the last few years, you know. Financially, mm, but I think they have to. Um, these games bring the best out of bowls generally, and their performance last week against Shelburne, not surprisingly, was decent, you know what I mean? One win and 15 in the league, but in between all those games, they did beat Shamrock Rovers at home in the cup. They have the worst home record in the league. Yeah. It just wouldn't surprise me, though, if they went out and beat Shamrock Rovers in this game. It really wouldn't surprise me. Um, Shamrock Rovers are stuttering. They look like they've kind of half given up on the league in many ways. You can see it, you see it in them a little bit. One notable thing is Mandrew. Um, could he come back to, to haunt balls once again? So um, it'll be a tight game. They usually are. I just have a sense that Bowles will end their little rut here and get a win. I'm gonna go for one nil Bohemians. Aye, yeah. Um, as you say, like Dundalk play Friday night, and if the result goes the way I predicted it, they go. Hmm. Bohemians are going to be two points clear of Dundalk. Hmm. Um, and if they. If they don't win on Sunday morning, then Drogheda have the chance to move within one point of them. So they're going to be like potentially looking over their, sh- not just looking over their shoulder, but fearful. Um, like banging. Getting, dra- getting dragged into that, yeah. that battle. However, if the other two results go in their favour, they have a chance to open up a gap. So it's which brings them more pressure. Is it the pressure of trying to open up a gap or the pressure of trying to get the gap back to what it was? Because um, you'd again, argue, JP, in the cup game, sorry, quickly, you're just arguing the cup game, the pressure maybe was off them a little bit. Yeah, as you say, it's if you're struggling in the league, it's nice to get a good cup run because it takes your, it, it can take your um, focus off, off your troubles for, for a week and then you can regroup and maybe get a win to, to boost yourself, etc. But um, for Shamrock Grovers, like it's imperative that they get into the the Europe. Um, we know with the way the cup draw has gone that Derry or Shelburne, one of them's gonna be out before the semi final. <laughs> then you're looking at Waterford, Sligo, Galway already gone, Pats already gone, Rovers already gone. So, so they place, hypothetically have to hope for Derry or Shelburne to win the cup. You know what I mean? If they get fort. Yes, yes, yeah. but normally in years gone past there's always been that chance of two of the top four top three getting to the final where now there's only one chance of one of them 
So it could well be the fourth place might not be enough. So they have to battle for third, get third, guarantee it. Don't rely on anybody else. Um, mm. If they miss out in Europe next year, it'll be really, really disappointing for them, um, especially having banked what they've banked this year and two years ago. Um, really disappointing year last year. So they've made up for it tenfold this year by they, they played four matches last year. Uh, as in four games across mm. two days and lost all four. So they, they make it all the way to the Conference League group stages this year. Really, really makes up for that. Um, and again, I, I think it's a daily mount. And I think both are going to get a win in this. Um, I, I really do. I'm going to say 1-0 Bulls. Interesting stuff. At 6 o'clock the same evening, St. Patrick's Day take on Drotter the United and... Obviously, Pats tonight went out to Istanbul. Won't get too much into detail about that, but in co- in context of the game on Sunday, I'd be interested to see from a Pats point of view if that makes an effect. I know they're they're travelling back tonight. Uh, I think Kenny's going to give them two days off and then training on Saturday to prepare for the game. Um, I don't know if they'll make changes or not. It'll be interesting to see in that regard. I know they do have a few days, I suppose, like you know what I mean. But uh, from Drottler's point of view, they should be coming into the game in a lot of confidence, having won seven nil and nine nil the last few weeks and banging in the goals. And it's a strange one though. Drottler haven't won away this season. Guess who their last away win in the league was against? Some Pats. Yeah. <laughs> you know, these things come full circle sometimes, JP, don't they? And in fairness, they got a good draw at Richmond Park earlier on in the season as well. So it's very, in- you're going first in this one. It's a very interesting game at Richmond Park. How do you see it overall? Well, I think some Pats playing tonight and having that extra day, mm. the rest mm. um, could well be beneficial rather than, so as you said, traveling back tonight, two days off and back in on Saturday, where if they'd played the game, Thursday, they'd be travelling back. They'd only have one day off and then have to. So I think that extra day could well work in their favour. Um, and I think we, we spoke a few weeks ago about Drahara having goal scorers in their team. We've seen it the last couple of weeks. They've scored 19 goals in two games. Um, Dundalk have scored, no, I know it's the league, but Dundalk goals. have scored 19 goals in the league. Sorry, it was 60. Was sixteen goals? Sorry, sixteen. It yeah, was. sorry. Yeah, but still, yeah, nine and seven. But um, <laughs> look, Drahada, they're the third highest goal scorers in the league after that, and it's incredible. And they're their second bottom in the league. They scored one more goal than Shama Grovers. They scored three more than Sligo. Where would you they're see w- in the league at this point of the season where a team second bottom might be the third top scorers in the league? It's crazy. Uh, sorry, they're they're four ahead of Sligo. Sorry, um. Two head of Sligo, three head of Sligo and goals, one behind Waterford and seven in front of Shelburne, who sits second top, second from the top. So it's absolutely incredible. I thought when I saw uh, Douglas Taylor um, early on, I thought he would, he would be a really good signing for them. He'd mm. get them goals. He's proved to be that. They've also got um, Adam Foley there who, who can chip in with goals. So I think... I think... I'm not sure if the two days rest the two days rest will do um Pat's good, I think. Mm. But in the context of this game, I think Sligo is it me first? Or, mm. I think some or sorry, not Sligo. Drahada I think will um go to Richmond Park and come away with all three points. I'm gonna say two one Drahada. Yeah, um as I said, Drahada should be coming into this game with an awful lot of confidence. Um I'm just not sure what Pat's reaction will like. Sometimes there's a come down after European games, regardless, isn't there, after the results and that. And they've performed very well in Europe throughout. I think uh, the five games unbeaten, I believe, is a record as well for a League of Ireland team. So uh, if that's the case, obviously it's a good record. But, you know, weirdly, though, from Pat's point of view, they've got nine games left. And if they went, if they went on a run in those last nine games, they could join the European race. It's asking a lot, but yeah. they could do because everyone else is going to drop points in and around there. And with the performance in Europe, you're very Stephen Kenny. You're kind of saying if we can hit even close to that standard in the league, we can get results. But obviously, if they were going to do that, for me, they have to win Sunday. End the story. Like yeah, to they, try and they start do. that off. It's a long shot, but I wouldn't completely rule it out. Is what I'm saying. Um, starts now. It starts now, not next week. Like it's absolutely. Having, yeah, having yeah. earned that run in Europe this year, hmm. 
they'll be really disappointed that, that they're not probably not going to get the chance they they have an hour go at it next year mm-hmm. but yeah, they that's the motivation be. for them isn't it and for Kenny it, to it motivate is. the players in that sense it, it is if you want more of this you've experienced this if you want more of it this is what you have to do mm-hmm. you have to bring that performance into your domestic campaign um, we can't win the cup but we can definitely finish in the top four and see what happens with the FA Cup. Mm. They're only eight points behind. They've got a game in hand on Waterford and Sligo. That's so the hilarious it, thing, isn't it, in all this? Like, so it, yeah. it's, still, it's still there for them. Bear in mind, Sligo and Waterford play each other. <laughs> yeah, but it has to start on Sunday. It has to start on Sunday, absolutely. It can't start next week. It has no. to start on Sunday. No. So it does. That's the thin line. If they don't win on Sunday, I'd completely rule it out. But I'm giving them a, t- a little window, I'd say. But it is going to be a difficult game because Drotter, are, Drotter for Sarah are a better side. Um, the most improved side from the window, I would say, you know what I mean, than any other side, in my personal opinion. So I think it is going to be a very difficult game. I'm going for a draw, but I think I might go for an entertaining 2-2 draw of Richmond Park for this one. So, um, yeah, that's it. Actually, just before we go, we'll give our prediction for, I know they were beaten 4-0 in the first leg, but Shamrock Rovers and Pauk in the second leg. What are you saying there? Um, I will say 2-0 Pauk. 2-0 Pauk. Do you know what? I'll just go for Shamrock Rovers to win (laughs) (laughs) 1-0. Right, we'll leave it there. Guys, let us know what you think at home. Let us know what you think in the comments. Give us a few predictions. Um, looking forward to your breakfast roll on Sunday. Thanks very much, uh, JT. And uh, see you later, bye.